Hello, and welcome to the short video called Get the Word Out, sharing your innovative practices, resources, and findings. In the next 10 or so minutes, we're gonna be going over how to strategize around disseminating the findings or products of the important work that you're doing. This video is brought to you by Evaluate, the evaluation hub for the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program, or ATE for short. Evaluate advances evaluation in the AT community by offering evaluation-related trainings, cultivating a network, researching emerging topics, and collecting data about the ATE program. If you haven't been to our website, be sure to check us out to learn more. We have tons of open access resources around evaluation geared towards those who might be newer to evaluation or those who have maybe more evaluation-related experience. I'm Megan Lopez, Senior Research Associate with Evaluate, and developed these resources alongside my colleague, Lissa wilson Becho, Principal Research Associate with Evaluate, which is located at the Evaluation Center at Western Michigan University. This is a good time to point out the views expressed in the video are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation. In this video, we're going to first discuss why we're talking about dissemination. Whether you're a researcher, an evaluator, or project staff, we encourage you to think about how you can clearly disseminate the important work that you're working on. We'll next share a dissemination planning matrix that we developed that's designed to help you think about how you might disseminate your own initiatives. Finally, we'll go through this matrix and fill it out step-by-step step so that you can fill it out using your own project examples. In this video, we will be using this fillable dissemination matrix. If you haven't already, please take a moment to visit the link on the screen to download a matrix of your own. We also have a step-by-step -step instruction sheet at the same link with an example of a matrix already filled out for your reference. Before we get too far into what dissemination is, I want to first cover why we're talking about dissemination at all. And to illustrate why we're talking about dissemination, I'm going to run a scenario by you and I want you to consider if it's ever happened to you. So to start, let's say you've just come up with an amazing idea for perhaps a really innovative initiative or a novel research study, something that responds to a gap in the research or a problem that's been identified. And with this great idea, you've put in now a ton of work to research and develop and implement that study or that activity you had planned. And now it's finally time to report on and share what you've done. But we also know that this stage takes a lot of work. So now you've put in time and money and energy to reporting on your activity or writing up your research results and evaluating perhaps its impact. And now you're ready to share it out. Maybe you send it to those within your university, you've been accepted into a journal, you put it on your website and you blast it out on social media. But as time passes, maybe you didn't get much of a response or you even forgot about it. And as soon as you posted it, you had to move on to the next project that you have on your plate. Now I know this has happened to me and at some point you end up feeling a little disappointed that this great idea and the important work that you've done is sitting on a figurative shelf collecting dust. Today we're here to talk about an alternative dissemination strategy to change the last parts of this story. So what do we mean by dissemination? Dissemination refers to the act of getting the products or outputs of your work to the audiences who can make use of them and do so in a timely fashion without delay so that the potential benefits of your work that you've done are maximized. So I know that that was a really quick overview of what dissemination is, but now that we've gone over dissemination, let's build our own matrices using real examples. In building this matrix, we're going to consider intended audiences, intended uses of the products of our work, deliverables, timelines, and the resources we might need to enact this plan. As we go through this matrix, I'm gonna use my own example as you think about yours. So we, before we get too far into it, I'm going to share the example that I'm going to use for background. 
Each year at Evaluate, we hold several training webinars on various evaluation topics. This is a quick plug. If you haven't attended one of our webinars, I encourage you to check them out. They're all free and have so many useful topics related to evaluation. As you might guess, after each webinar, we ask participants to complete a survey that asks their opinion about the webinar they just saw. While some of this data is quantitative and easier to analyze, those open-ended responses, such as written responses on what they thought was especially good or needed the most improvement, can be difficult to understand when you have hundreds of responses. So to better understand this data, we consulted with colleagues in the engineering department at our institution who knew of a big data technique that could analyze qualitative data. During this process, we realized that there were so many useful aspects of this work that we could share beyond the Evaluate team. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. To begin, I'm going to direct you to the top of your matrix where you'll see the word initiative. First, identify the initiative or the project that you would like to focus on. Think of an initiative or project activity with products or implications that others might find useful. This could be a research endeavor or an evaluation report or a product created by your larger project. In the example I provided, I'm going to write down analyzing feedback surveys over time. Examples in your own work could include an educational curriculum that you've developed or findings from a research study. Maybe you developed an innovative instructional method or useful materials that others could use. If you need a minute, I encourage you to pause this video and write your initiative title at the top of the matrix. Next, we're going to brainstorm the various audiences that benefit from the products, results, or outputs of your work. Consider those directly involved in your work or those perhaps impacted by it. Maybe discipline-specific audiences or academic communities or those within your institution. But don't forget to include your internal team if applicable to the project that you're referring to. For example, my audiences will first include our internal evaluate team or other ATE project staff and those involved in the same NSF grant, the evaluation community, and as we collaborated with those in the engineering department, we thought the engineering community might find this useful as well. So at this point, pause the video and take a moment to fill in your intended audiences along the top of the horizontal axis of your matrix. Next, we're going to brainstorm intended uses of this work. So to do this, I'm going to ask you to imagine that you're at a networking event filled with all of your intended audiences. This might include educators and students, researchers, evaluators, practitioners. And as you tell attendees about your initiative, imagine which takeaways that they might find the most interesting or useful to their own work. And I imagine that you know each audience might pick out something different depending on what their backgrounds are or their interests. For my project, I think that my team members would be interested in how we can use this data to improve upon our webinars. Those with NSF or the ATE grant might be interested in learning about Evaluate's webinar quality. And finally, others such as evaluators or researchers and engineers might be interested in the research methods we use since they were um, relatively novel. So once again, pause this video and fill in potential intended uses you identified along the vertical axis of your matrix. Now we're on to step four and we're going to begin considering what dissemination strategy will support intended audiences in achieving intended use. So let's start in the upper left hand square and think about intended audience number one and intended use number one. Example might include writing a research article in discipline-specific journal, developing a re report that details your findings, creating a tool or template that others might replicate. But keep in mind that not every use needs to pertain to every audience. And also be as specific as possible. If you plan to present at a conference, include the specific conference, the presentation format you might use, and the date of that conference. Some example in my matrix include building an interactive visualization that summarizes the feedback from Evaluate's webinars, or submitting a manuscript to the American Journal of Evaluation. 
So with these examples in mind, take a couple of minutes and fill in how you will disseminate the products of your work in a way that gets them into the hands of the corresponding audiences in a way that they will find useful. Remember that there might not be an applicable use for each use and intended audience. In these cases, I just put an X. You will also notice in the bottom right hand corner that I put question marks after a presentation for the American Society for Engineering Management Conference. If I'm not totally sure I want to do this, it might just be something I want to keep in mind. Finally, with your team, plan out your next steps. Start with your highest priorities by thinking about the original purpose of your initiative or the needs that it was designed to address. Consider who might take on certain dissemination tasks and what other resources you might need to do so. Remember to revisit this guide frequently and document anything that you've completed. So if you would like, take a moment to indicate your next steps by circling or highlighting the dissemination tasks that you plan to take on first. And that's it. We hope that you found this matrix helpful and that it's something you can incorporate into your current and future work. Please be sure to share it with your colleagues and reach out to us for any questions that you might have. You can find my contact information as well as Lissa's and the link to download both the fillable matrix and the instruction sheet with an, a complete example. Thank you again.